So in this discussion, I want to explore with successful traders like Daniel, Igor, and Severin how they approach their long-term vision for their career. Uh, we'll get into the deeper layers of purpose and spirituality that come with trading and how mistakes can actually ultimately lead to growth as traders. So to kick it off, um, I wanted to ask Daniel the first question. Trading has brought you financial success, definitely. But what are some long-term goals that you've set for yourself that go beyond the charts? Yes, yeah, so this is, uh, it's, uh, all, all the questions today are very thought-provoking and uh, I, I feel you're gonna learn some really good lessons um, from like experiences, talking about mistakes, um, and starting off with like the goals of the future, um, like moving away from directly related to trading. Um, for, for me, I have uh, four main goals um, that, I, that I have for myself. Um, and my first, uh, these are not necessarily in order, but like the first uh, goal that I have with Isabella is, um, you, if you can remember yesterday, the photo that Isabella had her own charity um, in Colombia. And uh, she actually had to, so she was the founder of this charity, and now that's been passed on to other people uh, because she left Colombia and, uh, and now lives with me. Um, and that was very obviously sad that she had to, to give that up, but we would like to uh, recreate this, and that's like her uh, real big passion. Obviously, I, I enjoy it as well. So for, for, for us, yeah, we would love to, um, yeah, create some sort of uh, another similar type of charity that helps uh, people that are really in need. May I would love to, us to relate it back to Colombia or South America because we both have a very big connection and love, of course, for the country. And I feel we can do a lot of good there. And, and she has contacts as well. So that for, for both of us is like a, <clears throat> a really nice way that we can uh, have fun and, and do, do a lot of good. And then related, well, not necessarily related to that, but my next big goal is I, I would like to have like a family. So this is over the next two, five years, but I would like to have, uh, of course, get married, have kids, uh, have some mini, uh, mini traders uh, being taught. <laughs> so that for me is like a really big uh, goal and um, yeah, something that I'm really looking forward to. Um, and then my next big goal is uh, related to the real estate so some of you uh, know a little bit about this but um, one thing that I uh, was really passionate about is well, I would not necessarily that's very word passionate but something that I knew was very sensible uh, was was getting into real estate um, and I would always say this is amazing like if you make trading profits don't keep everything in uh, trading yeah, you, you want to diversify really quickly um, in my opinion and it, that could even be when you're on your, you know, your, once you've made, you know, fifteen thousand dollars, let's say, a profit, like start to diversify a little bit outside of trading. That could be diversifying into stocks. But you want to get not everything in crypto, in my opinion. And um, once you've built up the, the capital, um, one of the first big investments that I made, and I would always say is a, a brilliant investment, is real estate. So. Um, I've now got a, a lot of real estate, but I feel that this is something that I would never want to stop. It's just something that uh, is always going to be around. I, I, met, I, I remember I put a post on Twitter the other day. Um, I was like, oh, I, I, can't, I can't remember what I said exactly, but I, it was something about a real estate, and I had a lot of comments from people like, oh, the real estate market's going to crash. Uh, you're going to be buying these new houses, and then they're going to be worth nothing in a few years. And one thing that I would say is there's always so many pessimistic people when it comes to real estate, when it comes to stocks, when it comes to trading, there's always, 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 as far as I can remember, perma bears that are just like, why are you investing in NVIDIA? This is gonna crash. Why are you, why are you investing in Apple? Why are, you, why are you putting your money, and now, like, why are you putting your money in real estate? Yeah, I've been doing this for a long time, but I, I just think it's so important to just follow your own path, and like, if you feel it's good, then it's good, and I think, majority of us would agree like real estate is a, is a good investment. Um, so yeah, I want to just continue to grow that and that's also something that's really cool because this is also like a family business of mine. 
Uh, so I work alongside my brother and my mum, and we just, uh, this is just for, because I do have houses all across the world, but the ones that are based in the UK, it's really nice because my brother and my mum are like helping out with it, and we, we have a good time, and um, yeah, I don't really want any more houses in the UK, but uh, around the world I'd like to continue to grow, and, and just another step of diversification, I think it's really nice. Um, and uh, that and then is my last final goal is like to share that kind of journey and like what I'm learning with the, when it comes to the real estate, like how I've made my investments, um, like what I look for when I'm buying new properties and like make this into content that I can share with, with members because I wouldn't say I'm like a pro when it comes to real estate, but I do have a, a very large portfolio and I have learned a lot over the years as well. So that is like, three and four goals are connected together because I, I feel I can offer value uh, when it comes to, to sharing that as well. So yeah, those are my, my goals of things not related to the charts. Man, thank you so much. That's really inspiring. And your, your thought about diversification is a good one. So I think we can get so invested into our trading, into one account, into one asset, that we forget that there's a whole other world out there and there's people we need to love and there's, uh, there's others who need us. And the charts are just one aspect of our personalities, right? We, we're not one dimensional, right? We have all these other things that are going on. And so I think it's, it's wonderful that you're thinking about this, thinking about how you're gonna leave your legacy, not only with your family, but with your fiance, shall I say, and uh, with chart champions as well. Yeah. So it was excellent, thank you. Thank you. Next question I have is for Igor. And this one is uh, close to my heart because we've had long conversations about this at dinners. As we all know, Igor is a family man. And I really would like to know, just from your perspective, what lessons do you hope to pass on to your children about trading and about living a life of purpose? Yeah, I've already got the uh, little eagles <laughs> running around traders. <laughs> um, and this is why I have those beautiful smiley faces every now and then, and those uh, lines. Um, but yeah, but for me, is. Um, I will share with them the uh, lessons learned database. So there's a lot of mistakes that I've done over the years, and I will share that with them. They're still quite little. As some of you have kids, if you told them one of the mistakes, they'll be like, "Yeah, Dad, can you just have um, <laughs> some cash for the uh, Roblox and stuff like that?" <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I will share the lessons learned database. I will teach them the the, the ropes. But ultimately, I think it's very important to let them discover what they want to do, um, because um, in school. Um, they just, they get taught how to pass, how to succeed, how to do this, that never to fail. And that's where you really learn. It's when you make a mistake and you learn from that. So um, my aim is to pass all of them to them, and, but, but let them rediscover themselves as well. But I think if I, um, well, I've tried with my eldest one, he's 12 now, it's the investing. Like investing is really important, diversifying. Um, so yeah, the little, the little one, um, you know, the eldest one is already starting to say, well, can I put some money towards this? What's the best thing? Um, uh, so I always keep them away from the crypto side because it's always a little bit volatile. I said, look, just Apple seems to be quite steady. Um, but yeah, I'm teaching them. And it's nice that my eldest, he plays Roblox and now Fortnite, um, you know, the tokenized uh, stuff. So it's very easy to kind of like explain to them what it is in the future that could, you know, mean something bigger. Um, so there's like a, a coin on uh, Roblox, which is a Roblox, I think it is, the, the coin, and it's it's a stock, and yeah, so it's, it's nice to introduce them to investing, because in school they don't learn that, they, they really, you know, there's no economical, um, it, it, it's just not there, so it's our job to pass that knowledge to them, and I wish my father taught me a little bit more about, <clears throat> about that, so I'm going to do my very best to, you know, keep them all informed, because from an early age, if you start investing, then you know the rest just speaks for itself, the compounding effect. So that will be my mission. Is but they very little still first and so. And and what about just really quickly? What about a lessons in life? Have you thought about you know what kind of people they're going to be and how to make them not make them but let them choose their own path in the positive direction? Yeah. Again, I you know it, it, they they still little um, I mean they, they, I, I think at this point they don't even know what they want to be yet but I will be there to support them whatever they they want to be 
and and just guide them through that, uh, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, like for example, if they want to work for a charity and just get that experience, for example, just just be there for them, really. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, you're an inspiration to us all. I mean that. My next question is for Severin, my good friend. May I ask, what, what does building a legacy mean for you? And how do you ensure that your work leaves a positive impact on not only our community, but hopefully on the world? Yeah, so my goals with uh, what we are doing here goes, uh, or they go way beyond financial goals. So what I want to make sure is that I leave an impact or a footprint on others. And what I want to do is focus on long-term value creation. Because if, you th if we think about how our web website is designed, our strategies can be taught or even you know, watched in years and decades from now. So. I really want to leave a footprint there, and um, in order to ensure that, I have to listen to your feedback, and this is something that I recently did for my scalping strategy. I know I showed my new lesson a lot, but um, there's going to be a new lesson on Sunday, and I was able to put that lesson together because I listened to your feedback. I um, saw the struggles that some of you have with trading on the one-minute time frame. And that really made me think on how I could improve and come up with uh, something that can help um, yeah, each and every one of you. So that is um, what I am going to focus on. Also, yeah, not forgetting about myself and my personal goals, obviously. But in my opinion, that is all in alignment with uh, teaching the community and helping you all to grow as well. So. Wonderful answer. Thank you, man. All right, passing it back to Daniel, and we're gonna get uh, maybe a little deep here. And I'll be the first one to tell you, in trading, it's much like, learning to trade specifically is much like being a kid. Uh, you make mistakes naively, and sometimes you don't realize how big the impact of your actions is. Um, in, in trading, that can mean financial loss, it can mean loss of your confidence, it can mean a loss of trust in yourself, as I was just speaking with someone about. And that's actually pretty hard to, to gain back. You know, if you break your rules enough times, you stop believing yourself. Um, stop trusting yourself to make the right decision. And that can really put you in a bad headspace, especially for trading, where you have to be confident, you have to trust yourself, and you have to have faith that your statistic or your edge is gonna play out in time. So I wanna ask you, Daniel, what, looking back at your, some of your biggest mistakes, what have been the key moments of self-discovery for you? Cool, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I feel that during my life, uh, I, I have made like a lot of mistakes, but I'm really good at learning from those mistakes for sure. And I'd like directly related to trading. You know, I, I feel like I became good at trading because of the trading mistakes that I made, and then rather than repeating and repeating and repeating, um, you know, learning from those mis mistakes relatively quickly. Uh, but when it comes to more related to over the past few years and chart champions, um, I got I can think of so many mistakes that I made, and I, I think this was related to like inexperience with well ex inexperience in life. I was relatively young, and also um, like a like I was touching on yesterday, I never really envisioned to have this like community and having it now like a, a business, having a lot you know working with so many people. And so, you know, I was not prepared for what was coming, and it, the way that it like blew up so quickly, I was, it was it was absolutely insane. Um, and for the first like uh, three years, I was like super um, like dedicated, like spending all day every day, and like giving it everything. And then in 2022, this is where I started to like slip up and make a lot of like personal mistakes. Um, so at that point, I, I started to lose a little bit of my purpose and a little bit of my motivation when it comes to trading and come to, to chart champions, I feel. Um, I decided at that point, like, I really want to start to travel a bit more. And like, I had a goal at the time, like, I just want to uh, find, a, I really wanted like, to find a girlfriend. I had prior relationships that had failed because of trading. And like my main goal, funny uh, story when, when, when I went with Matt to Columbia, I was like, my goal when we go here now is I just want to, I literally said to him like, look, my goal is to find a love of my life. 
I just really want to do this. But um, that, that <coughs> my mistake was uh, through that, uh, like, uh, want of doing that, I, I let go of too much of chart champions. So, you know, for the first, like, three years, I was, you know, all day, every day, like, in front of my computer, like, running. And obviously, at the start, I was on my own. So I had to do everything myself. And that was fun, and that was a challenge, but I, I was enjoying it fully. And then, obviously, in 2022 is where we already had a big team at this time. So I had uh, working alongside several different people. We had uh, other, we had the coaches, we had all customer service. And I, in my mind, I was like, okay, I can do this only putting in like one hour a day. And I have a whole team that can do uh, all of this while I'm like not so active. But I feel like my, my biggest mistake was really taking for granted chart champions. Uh, you know, I look back on a lot of my posts at the time and you see me like t taking uh, like photos of all these random women and just like Maria number one, Maria number two. And at the time I thought like, oh, I'm the guy. <laughs> I was like, I'm so cool. Uh, and, and I definitely let like my ego like get to me like massively. At the time I was, I had never had like so many followers or anything like that. And, I think my, in my mind, I was just like, oh, this is so cool. But I, and I couldn't really re reflect. Um, and I also, at the, at the time in the community, everyone was, was like laughing along and joking along. Like in 2022, the, the community was very uh, more um, uh, immature slash like just trolly. And so I was also, I've always been like a little bit of an internet troll, so I was just like having fun with it all. <laughs> and, and, and I definitely lost the professionalism for 2022, start of 2023. Um, uh, you know, I was going out partying all the time. And for me, that was like, looking in hindsight, such a big mistake. Uh, I, I look back on some of it, I'm just like face palming myself. Like, what was I even thinking, uploading some of these things like, um, I, I, I think I, at that point I was starting to let like myself slip in terms of I'd always been a very non showy off, uh, you know, very reserved. And then as I was starting to get more followers, I was starting to, um, you know, show off a little bit more about money and started to post more things and like how much money I was making. And honestly, one of my biggest mistakes I've ever made was revealing too much personal information to people that, because obviously I was doing these meetups. And at the meetups, I was meeting a lot of traders, um, and I was instantly very trusting of everybody. And at some of these meetups, I shared um, a lot of personal information that I wasn't sharing in the group about how much like, money I had made. I was showing like like sheep profits, which were like in insanely big. And I shared these profits to the wrong people um, that really took advantage of me, which I'll go into a bit later. But yeah, I think the, the biggest mistakes for me were, were almost just taking for granted like what I had with Chart Champions, because in my mind as well, I was like, at that point I was thinking, you know, I don't really need to be doing this. I, I have like a really big focus of what I want in my real life, like in terms of my like, wanted, really wanting a girlfriend at the time. And that for me, looking back, was not what I, I mean, I have to say I was glad the way it's all worked out because I did meet the love of my life. And one thing that I've learned from her is uh, pulling me back on track. And I, and I really would speak from the heart and say, it's so much better to just have one like girl, one wife, um, rather than going to this uh, partying lifestyle and going through with a load of different women. I, I, I would um, honestly say like 100% it's so good to just have one, one, one wife and uh, remain loyal, faithful, and <clears throat> you know, through forming that bondship, friendship, and uh, lovingness. Like, she motivates me every day. And so I'm, 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 I'm truly, I'm really happy about that. But um, yeah, I think just to summarize, yeah, my biggest mistakes really for me were like going off track and taking for granted chart champions, uh, expecting too much of like the other people that while I was working alongside. I just was like, at the time, yeah, I think I was very selfish-minded, just thinking, oh, I can just turn up, do the Champions live stream, and that's it. Whereas I should have been, um, I could, I could have still travelled, I think, at the time, but I should have balanced it better rather than just looking to do one hour a day. And in my mind, I honestly was thinking, I can come in one hour a day, make a good call, make some profits, and go. And and I was still doing good trades, 
And that's why, in my mind, I was like, how can people complain? Because I'm making good trades. Um, but I didn't really think of the bigger picture that I can still be making some good trades, but the way I was portraying myself, the way that I was acting, the, the, like the ego, the selfishness was um, like very damaging. And you know, that's one thing that, uh, yeah, I, I regret that period of my life, but I am also you know, overall happy that I went through it, I experienced it. And, and again, I learned from my mistakes and I, and I think it's visible uh, I, I think I hope it's visible over the past like six to twelve months uh, how much I've become more um, like motivated and really try to um, change the culture within the company and then also how that can spread out to the whole community because um, obviously during 2022 we had obviously a, a different general manager and over the past like six months you've seen for yourself like the team internally has changed and that's from me coming back in as CEO, and I was really able to come back with, I, I knew what I want now at Chart Champions. I want it to do well, I want it to be successful. I really want to help the biggest amount of people that we can, because uh, I, I truly believe in what we're doing. And with that, I, I needed to be really comfortable with the people that I'm working with. Uh, whereas before, I was taking a bit of a step back, I wasn't getting too involved. If someone wanted to make a decision, go to, go to someone else. I don't want to get involved in any of the management. Whereas now, I want to be involved. I want to be making the decisions. Um, I want to be there every day um, because I, I believe that was a, a big mistake that I made personally in the past of, of giving too much responsibility away and just not wanting to be there. Um, I, whereas now, yeah, I, I want to be here. So <laughs> those were just some of the mistakes <laughs> that I've made. One thing I've learned uh, about Daniel, just knowing him and becoming friends over the last couple of years, and now work colleagues, is that he's very good at identifying his own shortcomings, and he's very quick at fixing them. Um, that's something I really respect about you. Thank you. Man. It's usually a one and done thing with Daniel. And he does the same in trading, which is why I believe he's so successful. Um, but with that said, I think some of our biggest mistakes in life, while it doesn't seem like it at the time, can actually be some of our greatest starting points, you know? The low points, right, even on the charts, can be some of the best places to buy. And invest in yourself, if you will. Um, so I would say this, if you're in the midst of a big, big mistake, just take it with a grain of salt and just know that there's a bigger picture and that whatever's happening now is happening for you and not to you. So I truly believe that. All right, we have a next question here for Igor. How has your definition of success changed since you first started trading? And what, what does that truly mean to you now? Well, I, I'm actually glad the Maria, <laughs> <laughs> the Maria's <laughs> period is over. Um, but yeah, for me, success, I mean, uh, it, for some of you who don't know, I was running a manufacturing business. Uh, so success already, I mean, I could class that as, that as a success. A success. Um, but for me, it was more what truly matters. And I'm a family man. I've got two brothers, two sisters. Everybody's got kids. My dad's got 10 brothers, 10 sisters. My mom, 10 brothers, 10 sisters, all collectively. So we're a big family, like ginormous. We've got family all over the place. So, you know, you can just imagine Christmas is just a lot. You've, you've witnessed a bit of that. It's, yeah. it's just the food. So for me, that is success. It's being as much as we can with our families, kids. So that's why I've got three kids. I've always wanted to have three kids. And for me, that is my success. That is my purpose, is to have my family and to steer them in the right direction. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously there's always the money side, um, but that comes with investments, you know, having that nice cash flow, you know, so when you're having a bad day in trading, you know, that doesn't really affect you psychologically because you've got your safety net somewhere else, you know, invested, you know, safe, you know, the cash flow is really, really important. Um, um, but yeah, the, the, that to me is that success is, you know, because we are here in, in this world as passengers, we are just particles of dust and we just need to build those memories with our kids and our families and 
Yeah, that to me is that success. So not so much the monitoring side. Obviously, that really matters because we need it. Um, but yeah, that's you know that's that, that's what it is. You're saying. So you're saying money doesn't buy happiness. No. But having a well, happy family leads to a successful life. Yes. yes I truly yes, believe yes, that as well. But it does in a way. You, you, of course. You need, you need the you necessities, need the, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, of course. The comfort. You'd be able to put yeah. the food on the table. Yeah. Happy, <laughs> yeah. happy wife, happy life. Like I say. Yeah. Well, that's, that's very true. <laughs> <laughs> if she's not happy, there's no performance. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Yeah. <laughs> So I want to pivot over to Severin. I'm glad that wasn't recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so Severin and I have been good friends for a long time now. And one of the things we connect on most is about our own personal development, whether that's setting monthly goals, uh, keeping track of our health, uh, monitoring our own biometrics, and tracking data on a whole different scale. Um, but I want to know, Severin, You've always been very open about the importance of personal development in your life and spirituality. Can you tell me a little bit about how you're balancing the pursuit of finances versus your own personal development? And how have you continued to do so well at that? Yeah, so first of all, it's so funny that you ask me this question now in front of all these people, because that was the moment when we connected in San Diego. I remember that very vividly. So I met <coughs> Scott in San Diego, and the con first conversation we had was actually about meditation and personal development. So that's, um, yeah, quite funny that we're sitting here today and talking about that. So uh, as we all know, personal development is a very big thing in trading because in trading we learn so much about ourselves so that really goes hand in hand and what I learned is that the more I focus or the more I yeah, read books listen to podcasts about personal development the better I get in trading because that really puts you in the right mindset and in the right belief system to yeah, achieve success in trading so what I did to ensure that is to find a balance, because at some point I was also slipping a balance and I was just working and working all day. And that didn't have the, ba the best impact on my personal health or the way I felt. And now that I prioritize the balance and focusing on meditation, also going to the gym, and just as Scott was saying, the um, tracking my biometrics and all that, that really has a major impact on the trading success as well and on the performance. Because the other day I was actually talking um, with about that topic with my brother and he said, if you are a business owner, it's not about the hours you work, but um, what you will achieve in that time. And that's a very, very important thing because you could also view working out and having a balance as part of your working hours as well because that is what sets you up for those trading <coughs> or those good trades. Um, but I also want to pass it over to you, Scott. So what have you learned since you made those improvements and you started focusing on your health? So how has that impacted your trading? Because I know that we have been talking about that a lot, but do you also have that as a, or do you see that in your journal? Do you journal that as well? Because I remember we talking about that, that um, those metrics are also something we take into consideration when it comes to those days where we are taking bigger losses, for example, how that is correlated to yeah, outside um, circumstances. Yeah. I cut me off guard with this one. <laughs> but no, this is something I'm thinking about every day. And yeah, I do have multiple journals. Um, and I would say the biggest impact that I think I've learned about is my sleep. For my whole life, I, from since I went as a baby, um, I was told I was a great sleeper. And maybe as you grow older, um, those sleeping skills kind of get a little bit worse. And so I started tracking my sleep about a year and a half ago. And I realized um, I was getting up through the night many times, and I was tossing and turning. So I'd be in, I'd be in bed for, let's say, nine hours. But I only got you know, six hours of sleep or something. And so I had to really look at my, my life and think, OK, what am I doing to where I'm waking up in the middle of the night and not sleeping sound and not getting good quality sleep? Um, and so I started using the Aura Ring uh, as a start. And that allowed me to see not only like my resting heart rate, but also my HRV. And it tied all of those things together into a recovery score. And what I've learned over the years is that 
even though if you see something on your screen, like I'm green recovery today, or I have a really high recovery score, what actually matters is how you feel and what you believe. Um, and so one of the things I've really focused on is being kinder to myself. Um, I grew up in a sort of a competitive family, very business oriented, everyone very successful. My brother much more successful than I. And it was tough because at some points I felt like maybe I wasn't good enough. And I, I carried that with me from childhood into trading. And what you realize is that actually you have to have faith in yourself. You have to believe that you're worth it and you have to believe that you deserve it. Um, I'm still working on this, but it's something I'm actively, actively thinking about and journaling about. Um, but it, it's something that goes deeper than just uh, our conscious, right? It's in our subconscious and it's behind all the stats, it's behind all the, the, the setups, it's behind all the edge. Um, it's really what's overlaying all of that. Um, and so I'd say the biggest focus for me, besides just the retaining and maintaining a good sleep habit, has also been speaking positively to myself. And like I was speaking with someone last night and we were talking about the psych psychological aspects of losing traits and losing trust with yourself. And it's one of the hardest things because as you all know, if you've ever been, had someone break your trust, um, it doesn't feel good. It actually hurts really bad. Um, and it's tough to ever trust that person again or anyone else. And with yourself, it's like 10 times that, you know, because you're thinking, I can't even trust myself. How am I gonna trust myself to get to the next goal that I have? Um, and so one of the things I do now in the mornings is I have maybe a few affirmations that I say. Um, and I share those because it, it actually helps me a lot. It reminds me that I'm just a human and everybody makes mistakes. And that no matter what, you know, I think the biggest belief that I have developed, and, and I had to do a lot of work on what, what I actually believe, and some of it wasn't good. Some of it was actually pretty negative. Um, what I found out is that I actually really do have faith in myself. You know, I believe that no matter what happens, if I'm in this job or another job, or if you were to throw me out of the jungle, I'd be just fine. You know, I'd figure it out. And same way in trading, that if I have a really bad month, which I did have, you know, I think it was April, um, I had a really great beginning to the year, um, and then I had a, just a few days, actually, just two or three days that kind of wiped all that away. And what I was sharing with uh, my friend when we were speaking last night is that one of the things that's actually helped me immensely, and specifically with trading in this regard, is taking regular payouts, even if it was just on my Coinbase account where I had made some money on spot, just sell half of it and put it into my bank account, straight to the bank account to long-term savings. That way, it's already accumulated. I can't touch it, I can't lose it. <laughs> and. It meant a lot to me that after I had had those really bad days, I could go to my other account and say, well, I still have half of that left. You know, I didn't lose it all. And so I'd say last, last words, don't ever put all of your eggs in one basket. Try to find a way to diversify your assets. And if you are making money, just know that as traders, it, it probably won't last forever. And that you need to take advantage of that as much as you can. Yeah, that would be my answer. So. in life, you know, we go just like the charts. We go through highs, we go through lows, we have a really bad environment sometimes. Uh, my question for you is, and you're such a grounded individual, how do you keep your grounding during times of uncertainty? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy and it's chaotic at times with, with the kids and the schedules. Um, it is really, really hard and trading is not easy. You really have to have the whole thing aligned and working properly from your working environment to your, you know, everything needs to be aligned. And, you know, if you have someone on your ear, like saying, you know, we need to have this done now, or we need to go here, or we need to do that, you just can't focus, you, you can't be there. So I'm not gonna lie, it's hard, it's tough, but you have to separate those two things and treat the trading as a business. And when you are there, that is your working time and everything else has to be paused. And if that everything else is more important than the trading, then the trading has to be paused and then you have to jump. So it's about prioritizing. It's about like communicating with your other halves, 
um, spouses, husbands, wives, and, and just making that plan for the week. You know, what are we doing? Who are we seeing? What's that day? And just making that schedule. I have schedules everywhere that sometimes I turn around to my wife and says, can you please just not book anything else? Because I can't see past tomorrow, <laughs> let alone next year. And it, it, it is crazy sometimes. Three kids, birthday parties weekend, like this weekend, <laughs> I bet there's, my ear is going to probably start wheezing in a minute. Because <laughs> there's a lot going on all the time. I mean, you know, you've got four kids. Five? Four? Yeah, five. Five! <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard because there's like birthday party number one, uh, ballet practice, uh, jump whatever, uh, trampoline, football, uh, soccer, whatever. There's just so much stuff going on, just like the charts. Up, down, up, down, up, down. You have to have that separation. And I'm very, very happy and, and humbled and, and grateful that I have such... And a wonderful wife. She really, really supports me. Like honestly, they say, you know, there's a there's a quote which is behind every great man there's a great woman. She's it. <laughs> She's it. She really, really helps me. And you know, the planning, uh, the cons, like the, even the meal plans for the week. We all we, we always have a plan, so there's no waste. There's we just know what, what's coming next. And I think that's really important. There's no oh we need to get a takeout because there's no dinner. We, we have it. it's it's always there because we plan it and i don't want to sound like oh it's perfect because it's not um but we do our best to keep it all in check and i think i think this is it like you know planning and and this this is why i start my very first coach lesson was daily routine because you know i knew from my business that uh, when i walked in there for the first time it was a freaking mess like honestly it was just dirt it was there's just, there was just it was not organized and when you're organized, maybe a little bit of OCD kicking in here, um, but when you are organized, things do tick along better and you are, you can focus it down and hone in on your charts. For me, it's the music. You all know I love my music and I can then play the music and everything around starts to diminish and it's just noise and I just am up one with the charts. And that's how I stay focused, um, is by having a plan, being organized, knowing that I've got the support, knowing that I am organized, I know what's happening, I know what's coming. If I don't, I'll ask the wife, I'll send her a text saying, what's next? <laughs> and she'll tell me. But that's how I stay grounded and keeping an eye on the bigger picture, which is, you know, that success and that, that switch off at the Friday afternoon and just knowing that that's it. I don't have to worry about the charts. I don't have to worry about that. And typically Friday afternoon is when I really step back and says, okay, this is my time now. And I turn to the kids and I give them my all. And I do remember that, that daily routine video. It's actually what inspired me to create a daily routine and start thinking about, uh, you know, because when I, when I transitioned full-time trading, it was, it was very difficult. Yeah, it was, it was like a, a dirty place and, and you really don't know what to do when. And so I was finding myself spending maybe too long just surfing the net or looking into things that weren't that important. And I really had no structure to my day. Um, and so putting some structure in that and, and becoming more organized I remember asking Daniel, because we had the one-on-one, -on -one, and I said, look, I've got 20. I said to Daniel, I've got like 20 coins. Like, you know, it's really hard. Like, I've got the analysis, everything is spot on, but I missed them all. <laughs> and you've all been there. It's like, oh, crap, that's gone. <laughs> I can't buy the top. And at the time, it was pretty much long, 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 but I'm not going to yeah. long the top. And he says, just trim back. Just watch one or two. And I married Bitcoin. Remember we had the yeah. joke? <laughs> we married Bitcoin. And that's how we kind of like, you know, got it. Because we were just looking at Bitcoin. The rest didn't matter. And we knew uh, you get in sync, right? So that's that's why sometimes I said, let's get in sync with the market. And it's not just, oh, it's higher highs and higher lows. It's actually getting that connection and feeling like you actually feel the chart. Like, you know, with NQ and ES sometimes, you just feel it like, you look at it and you're not looking for that trade. That trade is kind of like just right there. Like yesterday, the long, yeah. I, I looked at it and was like, you know, I didn't look for it, I could see it. It was just there, it's like a calling, like, you know, I could cook. It's, it's just there. And yeah, so when I spoke to you and it says, yeah, you're looking at too many things. <laughs> and you know, looking back in hindsight, it's like, yeah, if you're looking at a hundred coins, how are you gonna be like, I mean, you're gonna have luck, you know, just you know, one of them will work, but hopefully you, you just have to, Trim it back a little bit, and yeah. Not so sustainable. Yeah, exactly, it's not sustainable. So thank you for that, mate. No worries. Yeah, excellent, excellent. 
And I want to give our last question to Severin. I mean, this is something I'm really personally curious about. So my question for you has, you know, <laughs> what, is your, what is your personal philosophy and how has uh, your own spirituality influenced the way that you approach life? Yeah, I think since I got a little bit more spiritual, I am way more balanced in life. And my girlfriend Sophie also helped me a lot with that because she's also interested in the same things. And that is kind of our thing that we do together. And um, she always reminded me to find a balance and do something else apart from trading because um, sometimes we get carried away and just focus on the charts all day. But one thing that I really learned is that um, we all obviously have visions and goals and that is also something that I always practice in my meditations. I try to visualize what I want to achieve in life. But one very big thing that I actually learned from a guy called John Asaraf is to also reflect on achievements. So what I do is, as um, I have a um, vision board, I also have an accomplishment um, board because um, sometimes we get carried away with all these goals that we have and we kind of forget about what we already achieved. So I was talking uh, with Sophie yesterday and we obviously sometimes get these nice messages of you achieving great results in trading, but we kind of sometimes read over it and forget about it, but now really living in the moment, appreciating the moment, talking to you, is something that I really learned uh, through spirituality, especially in modern times where everything is just moving so fast that we kind of have to take a step back and appreciate the moment a little bit more. So that is what I really try to focus on. I still do because, um, yeah, in trading everything, the markets move fast, uh, the world is moving very fast. So um, sometimes we just have, have to take a moment in silence and appreciate the moment. <laughs>